Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, this uh, session on Friday, 5th of January, a um, recorded session today because um, people are very much um, still traveling, still on uh, holiday break. And uh, uh, I wanted to share a few things and just circulate it out to people. So a few things that were on my heart for 2024, not a new word for 2024. We gave that last time and circulated it. And thanks for your amazing responses to that but really looking at a couple of things that God put on my heart based on uh, primarily some of our earlier earlier teaching um you know we keep coming back to the same starting point I don't think I'll ever change it but we need to remember that what we're doing is partnering with somebody we're partnering with Jesus and uh, so much of the word for 2024 was on the de-Jesusification of the church and the need to find the king again in kingdom and put that back in place. And as we move forward in 2024, that's certainly something that I want to be doing, putting that king back into kingdom and everything that I do, everything, not just the, the um, lip service, but in reality. So I wanted to go back and look at 2024 in the light of our concept of identity that we talked about at, at length. So we're just going to touch on it. Hopefully this will be fairly short, but really looking at identity and what it means for us in 2024. If you remember, we have an identity in Christ, who we are. Forget who we think we are. We have an identity in Christ that God wants us to walk in. There are works for us to walk in. That, that was the core theme underneath identity, if you remember. And that's Ephesians 2.10 is one of the examples. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works that which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in, living the good life which he pre-arranged and made ready for us to live. That's Ephesians 2.10 in the Amplified Classic Edition. Some things I want to pull out of that is, one, there are paths for us to take that were planned. So guess what? We go to New Year's, we start thinking of New Year's resolutions, new year, new plans for the new year. And we start making our plans for the new year our thought for the new year, our thinking about well, how we failed in the previous year, how we succeeded, whatever our analysis is on the previous year. And the reality is we have to pull it back again to the centrality of Christ. We're recreated in Christ, not us anymore, by the way. We're born anew. And there are predestined work uh, works. Um, I love the translation says planned beforehand. So guess what? Today, God has a plan for you. 2024, God has a plan for you. So just think if I met with you and I handed you an envelope with a travel itinerary and said, hey, come, we're going to go to Israel or we're going to do this. This is our plan for 2024. I would have a plan for what we're, we want to do in the 7,000 or just generally, right? I would have something that I want to do, something I want to plan. God is like that with it. He's got a plan for us, our lives totally, but I just wanted to boil down a piece of our identity talk to how about our identity in 2024? How about our, our identity in January? Okay, how about our, our identity January 5th today? All right? Works which God predestined, He planned something for us to do. He planned some paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them. So, and I love the fact that we get the why in the Amplified Version. Why? Living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Now, we talk about that in the context of the blessing in Kingdom Find, the blessing that makes rich and adds no sorrow. We want to operate in the blessing. We align with him, in him, in unity with him, we live and move and have our being. Therefore, we are connected to that good life. If you remember an identity we talked about, piracy. Piracy 
just imagine the one-armed pirate with the hook, you know? What is a pirate? He's the captain of a ship with no authority, right? He's stopping ships without authority. He's do he's made waging almost like war without authority. And this comes from Matthew 7, 23, amongst other places. But Jesus saying, after people come and say all the stuff they've done, amazing. Didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? And he says, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Lawlessness. You, though you who practice piracy. Because isn't piracy lawless? If you're doing good, if you're doing works that aren't yours to do, you're taking actions that aren't yours to take. Isn't that piracy? It's certainly lawlessness. So doing good things, or things the world might say are good, can actually be lawless and can lead us to sever that connection with Jesus. Because wouldn't you say if Jesus is saying to you, hey, get out of my sight, I don't know who you are, you're lawless, that you've severed that connection to the good life that he wants you to walk in. I would argue that you'd have the opposite. You'd have the bad life that he doesn't want you to operate in. You'd have the bad results that he didn't want you to operate in. Hey, in 2024, in January, in January 5th, I want to be sowing into the good works that God's planned for me to walk in and the good life that he wants me to enjoy. So, Father, I come out of agreement. I come out of covenant. I come out of connection with things that aren't part of this good life. I want the good life that you've prepared for me to walk in. You've predestined for me to walk in. Father, and any elements of lawlessness where I'm doing my own way, where I'm being willful, where I'm saying it's, it's my way or the high, this is how we're going to make it work. No. We're coming out of agreement with that. So no piracy. And you don't measure piracy or lawlessness by measure of good or evil. You measure it by prepared for you to walk in or not prepared for you to walk in. Right? That's the criteria. Prepared for you to walk in or not prepared for you to walk in. That's the test. So don't say, oh, I'm doing this. I'm just great. I'm feeding thousands. You know, you can give your body to be burned, your goods to feed the poor, and it profits you nothing, right? We need to be in that profit cycle, the profit being living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. So predestined, planned works for 2024, not the... New Year's resolution works, which can be good, but not really what it's all about. We also talked about hopium, my little play on words, hope uh, versus opium, a drug, hopium. Where that comes from is this, faith comes by hearing. So Romans 10, 17, our example of that. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Again, we're into Jesus, right? The words of Jesus. So we know that if we're walking the works in our renewed life that he's, he, Jesus, has prepared for us to walk in, right, that we have a word from him we're hearing. And faith comes in because we've heard, right? Let me be very clear. You can't have any faith in a piratical action or something that you're walking in that he hasn't ordained for you to walk in. If you're a pastor right now and God hasn't wanted you to be a pastor, then, um, you know, bless you, but you're not going to have any fruit in the real sense because you're a pirate at the pulpit. All right? Pirate at the pulpit. Faith comes by hearing, hearing through the word. So we have to align ourselves in him. We have to see the works prepared for us to walk in. We have to walk in them. If we're walking outside of them, and we've got this rigid kind of hopium that we meet in people, right? Perseverance, fleshly perseverance. Um, they call it faith. And guess what? It's not. It's hopium, right? And I gave some examples when I taught on this. I'll just remind you of one of them. One of them is, you know, a chap that said to me, William, you have to have more faith in this project. I said, well, hang on. I had a dream that revealed to me that the project was corrupt. 
the person driving the project was defiled and that uh, I was to exit. So I had a pro profound encounter with the Holy Spirit through a dream telling me the true circumstances. I was not open to hearing about needing to have more faith. Because what he was talking about is rejecting the word he was hearing from me, the word of the Lord and the circumstance, and continuing to hope that the project worked well because he'd invested in it. Um, that's that's an example of hopium in the business context. There's lots of them. So get get this clear. There's no faith in plans. There's no f faith in business plans. There's no faith in bright ideas. We can only have faith on that rock of Jesus. Only faith on the rock of Jesus that gives us the words and the works to walk in. That's a reminder. And in case we've missed that point totally, Hebrews 11.6, what is it? And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and he rewards those who seek him. Right? Without faith. You can't have faith unless you have the word. You're not in the word if you're walking contrary to what God would want you to do. And you have to believe that he rewards those who diligently seek him. What's the reward? The blessing that makes rich, that adds no sorrow, the good life that he prearranged and made ready for us to live. How many of us here want the good life? I, I certainly want the good life, right? I don't want any more hard roads. So, Father, pull out of our spirit the hard roads. Pour out of our spirit the chains that, as Joseph was spoken about, entered into his spirit because of the bondage, the cruel bondage of the people in, in uh, the Hebrew people in um, in Egypt. We don't want that. The rock of Jesus. So 2024, he has what? Works for you to walk in. All right? There are things, gifts, let's call them, ready for us this year. What are the gifts for the 5th of January? They're already here. We don't need to conjure them up. We don't need to magic them up what are they and where are they? Let's pay attention to these key words for 2024. Not let the prophetic words just come and, oh, oh that was nice, oh, and wash off us and we don't pay any attention to it. There's things happening now. Think about my word for 2024 in terms of reverse money laundering. How do we battle against reverse money laundering? Yeah, you know, I think many people that have been faithful in 2023 in support and giving and prayerful, everything. But what is required? What are we doing for 2024? Where are we at? He qualifies us, by the way, right? He qualifies us. I talked about that, about being people that are being forged in the crucible of God's presence. Forged in the crucible of God's presence. The people that think they're in place, they'll say, oh, you know, who do you think you are? What's going on? Boom, as they're taken out. Why? Because God's raising up new leaders to do what he wants to do. New people to be in places that he wants them to be. Pirates are falling down. Defilement is falling down. Uh, cir circumstances are shifting. Right? We talked about that in the Word for 2024. But, but pause there. There's some other good words that have come out. Uh, many of which seem to parallel what I put out, which is amazing, because that's how it should be. That's how it should be. In 2024, we want what? More blessing, more breakthrough, a tighter alignment in him to walk in what he's called us to do, called us to do. I'm not going to go into the teaching on the gates right now again, but I want us to remember that there are places where heaven meets earth. Heaven meets earth. You think about... The, wall, the battle for Jericho, there was a battle for Jericho, and they were to do something in the flesh and blow the shofar, blow the trumpet seven times. And something happened when that shofar blew, it resonated in heaven and it resonated on earth. And there was that connection in the spirit, there was warfare at the gate of Jericho. The walls fell down, you know the story. 
There's warfare at these places and pivotal places of destiny where God is calling us to step into. Don't like to blow up the warfare. Don't like to talk about it. I'm not glorifying it. But guess what? Moses was to come as a deliverer for his people. They were killing all the babies. Right? Killing all the babies. Jesus was coming as a savior. And the enemy got a whole wind of it and killed the innocents. They had to flee to Egypt. Right? Flee to Egypt. David, too. He was anointed and had huge um, tests with the, uh, wasn't it the bear and the lion and then Goliath. Why? There's challenge. There's challenge. There's warfare at the gates. There's warfare at the gates. And we are prepared for that warfare at the gate. We're winners in that warfare. We're overcomers, but not if you're in piracy, not if you're in hoping. Not if you're in piracy, not if you're in hoping. And think of things that are built on false or cracked foundations. You know, that, that's why the, the teaching, the book, the course that we're, we're starting again on the 18th for people is really designed to say, how do we, how do we rebuild the altar of our life? to the way that it should be, so that we can host the presence of God's fire, so that we can be forged in the crucible of God's presence. So brothers and sisters, if you've gone through some difficult times, if you're going through difficult times today, right? If your bank account is empty, that's because God wants you to operate with a full bank account, because you're going to know how to deal with it in this next season. So Father, I break off the struggle of the, the past season for people. The, I break off the sighing of the past season, the heaviness of the past season. No, no, we're in divine encounter mode. Every day is a divine encounter with the path that God's called us to walk on. Every day is a blessing, right? Every day we're encountering the power of God falling on the altar of our lives. That's why we, brothers, if you've got something buried that needs to come out and get sorted, get it out and get it sorted, right? You don't want everything good that you've done in your life to come into question because something um, is hidden. Sort it out. SOS, sort out your stuff going into 2024. So you can stand there and say, Father, I'm your instrument standing in this place. And guess what? It's not about what you bring, right? Moses thought he had a lot of stuff, at the end of the day, he could say it seems like he could barely hit talk. He had a mouthpiece that had to come and speak for him. Right? He didn't bring a lot. A refugee um, murderer wanted, you know, hiding out in the wilderness as a shepherd. It's not about what you bring. God will use God uses what you are and what you bring, but you're not bringing anything to the table. That really matters because these are works he prepared for you to walk in. It's his grace and it's his plans. And grace and faith, these are the divine enablers, if you will, to get us to where we are. Right? That's what I talk about the forged in the crucible of God's presence. Grace and faith. For grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your doing, it is the gift of God. So hang on, even walking in this life that we're called to walk on, it's a gift of God. Ephesians 2.8, that is, right? Just before the talk, he mentions the works prepared for us to walk in. Right? Grace. Prepared. There's stuff for you to walk in because God prepared it, not because he needs you, your divine whatever, to do it. It's a gift. If you're doing what God has called you to do, then you can have faith in the process. Remember, I talked about that in the past, about the lesson of the 5,000. Jesus spoke to the disciples. You, you never learned the lesson of the 5,000 when they were crossing the sea and got scared. At its core, what's that lesson? The lesson is if Jesus gives you an assignment to cross the lake in a boat, and meet him on the other side, then why are you scared you're going to sink? The God that created the world, that created the universe, has given you a word to cross to the other side. You're going to cross to the other side because you're standing on those words. So be like Flint. 
be like Flint, the blessing of the rich Edsmo Sorrel, right? Bl blessing of the, the righteous have never been begging for bread. Be like Flint on the word of God over your life and be firm like Flint in faith on the calling that God has given you that isn't hopium and piracy, that core calling of our identity to walk in. He prepared those works for you. You didn't choose God. He chose you. He chose those works for you. So I don't want to hear anybody say, oh, I don't know if I can do that. You know, that oh, that sounds a bit scary. Do I really have to speak? No. Use it. Use it. The works are evidence of bring to birth your divine calling and appointment. God has an appointment for you today, an appointment for you in 2024. Things to do, things to walk in. He's got a path. You know, think about the um, prince's trust. You know, my daughter did one of those prince's trust things where she goes up in the wilderness, right? Um, Duke of Edinburgh Awards, I think it was called, yeah. And um, they didn't just wander around. There was an appointment, there was a time, there was a commissioning. They they were watched to make sure they weren't cheating. There was there was a path prepared. And if you think if a, uh, if a worldly prince can do it, if a worldly organization could do it, how much more God can prepare everything that you need for your walk? Everything that you need for your walk. The riches in the spirit realm in 2024 right, are there to manifest in the physical realm. The riches in Jericho came and destroyed the wall, right? The, the riches came and destroyed. The riches for Elijah came and burned the fire and the offering on the altar. Why? Because there's a connection between heaven and earth in these divine appointments. And we are walking divine appointments. We are walking divine appointments. When you walk into a place, you need to say, hang on, is this the works I'm prepared to walk in today? Because I am bringing the atmosphere of heaven into this place. Change, 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 change. Shifting atmospheres. Riches in the spirit realm manifesting in the physical. You know, I had two dreams. I'm going to share excerpts of them because I don't actually remember them all that clearly. Two dreams in, just at the end of... 2023. The first dream, my mother-in-law was in heaven. I saw her there, and there was an angelic entity, heavenly entity, over there taking like this from her hands. And when he came to me, his hands were, were covered in this heavy, heavy, goopy oil. It's not like oil that drips off and hits the floor. It would, it would hang down. It was heavy. It was a heavenly substance that I'm calling oil. And he came to me and he rubbed it all over my hands. And there was a lot more to the dream that was closed that I don't remember, but that was the first dream. The second dream, two nights later, I think it was um, the night before New Year's Eve. I'm in heaven and I'm at the door of the heavenly treasury. And I, my hands are all the same hands that have just been covered in oil. And they placed a, a large gold ingot in my hands. And I remember standing there with this ingot, thinking, this is amazing, taking this back with me to earth. Um, but I was thinking, well, I, we need more than that for what we're doing. This is great, but we need more than that for the works we've been prepared to walk in. And I remember somehow in these dreams <laughs> negotiating the delivery of a large load, a pallet-sized large load of this heavenly gold into the earthly realm. Divine appointment. What's that going to look like <laughs> in, in 2024? Uh, what's it going to look like in 2024? You'll replay this. You say, wow, William, that was prophetic. Or you'll say, wait, William, we're still praying for you. But we see divine appointments, and that is the riches in the spirit realm manifesting in the physical. Jesus lifted up the bread and the fish, and he blessed it. 
right? And then God did the miracle and the distrib distributed out and there were 12 baskets left over. We are in the 12 baskets left over season where there's manifestation, not just in prayer of what God can do, what he is doing, what we know he's working, but these things happening, 2024, 2024, 2024, we call it forth. Prospering, prospering, prospering. I think also this means that there's some new opportunities. That things are open for us in 2024. I spoke about that as the year that we needed to watch, not just the cracking of the creaking chair of all the economy and the election fraud and all the craziness going on, the lawfare, the destruction of our civil, all of these things that we see, that there, there's been a massive separation going on at the end of 2023. But that means there's new opportunities because we're about to see the rising up of what I've termed the digital rapture. That's part of the word for 2024 that I, I released earlier. We have a part in it. I have a part in it. You have a part in it. The 7,000 has a part in it. We want to fulfill that part, not by being distracted into op opium or piracy, but pressing forward into what we're doing. Pressing. I also want to make sure that this season that we've gone through opens us up to be conduits for God's rich blessing. Not where we respond with a bitter root judgment that says when we get money, we're going to hoard it, baby. We're never going to be in circumstances again. You know, that kind of reverse money laundering. Breakthrough comes, brothers and sisters. We need to be saying, okay, God, how do we partner with you to destroy the works of Satan? I am not against the good life includes a nice house and cars, all these things. I'm not against any of those things. I think it's a mark of the poverty spirit to be against those things. right? But they aren't our lifestyle. They aren't our goal. They aren't what we are focusing on. We need to be focusing on how we can implement this amazing and wonderful life. You know, I think it was Donna that said this, that if there isn't any contending at a door, it's probably not worth much. People don't guard gates unless there's something valuable behind them. There aren't many sewers that are guarded, right? Aren't many sewers guarded. You guard the treasuries. All right, so we, we are going to have some contending at these gates, but God prepares us to walk in them. God prepares us to walk in. I, I also declare that this is the, the year the word over your life is manifesting in its physical sense. The 12 baskets left over. All right, there's a time when Lazarus was in the grave, and there's a time when Lazarus was coming forth and walking out. There's a time that Joseph was in prison. And there's a time that he was called up to meet Pharaoh and embarked on his uh, journey of building his storehouses for Joseph's storehouses. We're in that season, I believe, right now where these things are starting to manifest. Take action, therefore, on your divine appointments. I don't care what it is today. You may have been sick at home with the flu, which we rebuke. You may have some other ailment or something that's kept you at home. Do one thing. Do one thing today to take action on your divine appointment. If you're broke, send a pound somewhere. Take action on your divine appointment. Take action on your calling. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm saying, well, we're not starting till next week. But I needed to take action on my divine appointment and my divine calling today. Today. There needed to be a declaration at the earliest time in 2024 of what I believe God is saying about opening these gates. Why? So we can have fresh hope and fresh courage. Fresh hope, fresh courage. I call forth fresh hope and fresh courage. Courage is the greatest virtue. Courage is contagious. We want to take action. Take action.
So Father, right now, I just pray for everybody that hears this short reminder. I pray that their presence would be aligned with you, that their life would be aligned with you, that the blessing would make rich and add no soil, that there would be open doors manifest, that they would come out of agreement with piracy, come out of agreement with hopium, come into an understanding of the works that you've prepared for them to walk in January 5th, January, and all of 2024. Father, the, the traps laid of reverse money laundering and distractions and being pulled hither and yon into other things, those things would be broken. Father, I pray for the manifestation of things that people are walking into in 2024, new opportunities, new blessings, the word being manifested in your physical life. I pray for healing where healing is needy, needed. I pray for divine encounters. Just take it in. There's a divine encounter for you today. Father, I ask that you'd mobilize the angelic in heaven, the angelic on the earth, that there would be huge activity of things happening to bring all these things to pass, pass in our life we pray that in the name of Jesus.